Yeah, very good morning to all of you. So we have started our discussion on uh, bending is stress. We will continue with that topic. So we have seen the bending equation also, right? These are the equations we have seen. Now we will see is the location of the neutral axis exactly where the uh, uh, neutral axis will be lying, right? The location of neutral axis. Note down the topic. The neutral axis will pass through the centroid of the cross sectional area when the material follow Hooke's law and there is no axial force, right? Note down this statement. That means. Initially, I don't know whether the where exactly the neutral axis will be. Uh, let me just consider somewhere from the cross sections. Let me just take the beam. And let me consider somewhere the positions of the neutral axis. I don't know where exactly it is. Right now, I'm considering uh, somewhere here that this will be the y axis, this will be the x axis. And let's suppose my area is something like this, which is being focused. DF, DF is the elemental force, which is acting on this elemental area. DA, on this elemental area, DA, DF force is acting, right? Something like this, right? Something like this. So try and understand what I'm saying. The neutral axis is passing through the centroid, but we have to prove it. And in fact, there is no axial force, right? When there is no axial force, that means externally we are not applying any, any amount of uh, axial force, right? So what I will be saying, summation of forces in the horizontal direction is equal to zero. For example, right now if I consider, summation of forces will be zero. That means applied force, that is equal to what? Resistive force. Resistive force will be there because of the bending, but applied force will not be there in the axial force direction, right? That means we have we have applied the what movement? We have not applied the axial force. Externally, we have not applied any amount of external force, axial force, normal force, right? 
we have just applied external bending moment, right? So applied force is zero. Then what about the resistive force? That is also going to be zero. That means DF will be zero. DF can be written as what? Integration of for whole area, I will be doing the what? Integrations. So DF will be zero. DF will be zero means what? Sigma into DA will be zero. Sigma into DA will be zero means what? Already we have seen that sigma is what? Directly proportional to y. Sigma will be what? K times of y. So what we can write? K into y into DA. That is equal to zero. So further what we can write? Y into DA will be zero. And y into DA will be zero means what? Everybody know from the engineering mechanics. Everybody know from the center of gravity concept that whenever we are about to find the y bar, what we used to write? Y into DA divided by integration of DA. If that is zero, y bar will be zero. Y bar will be zero means for any particular cross section. What about the y bar? Y bar is the distance from the x-axis, right? Something like this. If y bar is zero, that means x-axis will also be passing through what? Centroid. That means, that means my difference. Whatever the y is distance is there, this particular distance. You know, that is going to be what? This whatever the, you are about to take the particularly uh, moment of inertia about the neutral axis. You are saying that this is only the centroidal axis. You are saying this is a centroidal axis and you are saying this is a neutral axis. So definitely neutral axis as well as centroidal axis will coincide when there is a no x-ray force, right? Please make a note of it. Neutral axis will become centroidal axis. Will become centroidal axis. Make a note of it. Neutral axis will become a centroidal axis. When there is a no axial force, remember, when there is a no axial force, only pure bending is there, the neutral axis and centroidal axis will coincide. So either you take moment of inertia about the neutral axis or you take the moment of inertia about the centroidal axis will not make any difference. See, some of you might be confused what we have discussed till now. See, understand. In our derivation, in our last class, see, these are the important things, guys. Directly, if you just observe any institute, directly they will be giving you a statement. That's it. But no one, no one going to have the guts to prove this one, right? Understand, we have taken the neutral axis and we have taken somewhere fiber distance, you know. Some fiber we have taken at a distance y. Some fiber we have taken at a distance y from the neutral axis. To find the what? Whatever the forces is there and whatever the normal stress will be there because of the bending on that particular fiber. But what is the position of this neutral axis? What is this position? Whether it is coinciding with the centroidal axis, whether it is below the centroidal axis, whether it is above the centroidal axis, we don't know. Right? And let me consider that this is my centroidal axis, CG, CG axis. Right? Right now, we don't know whether the neutral axis is coinciding or not. But for the sake of understanding, when there is no axial force, I would have taken this particular suppose neutral axis. Right now, I have taken somewhere here. For example, this is my neutral axis. And my centroidal axis is somewhere here. For example, this is a centroidal axis, CG, CG x axis, right? This is the y axis. So I don't know as of now whether this CG axis and neutral axis will coincide. I don't know. But the moment I got to know that, y into da is zero that means y into da is zero means what that particular axis will become what centroidal axis from where whatever the distance we have taken y you know from that particular axis that axis will pass it through the centroid that is the meaning of y da is zero because y bar is zero y bar will be zero means what that particular axis will become what something like this see for anything if you take the axis like this what about the y bar for this particular section? Zero. What about the x bar? Will also be zero. Both will be coincide with the centroid of that particular section. But if I just change the if I just change the particular coordinate axis, something like this. Now in this scenario, we will be having both y bar as well as x bar. Get my point. Make a note of it.
is it done for all all of you have noted down then then guys is it done now we'll try to solve some of the problem that is being asked in previous year paper now try to focus and remember guys for understanding the bending stress and formula for the moment of inertia you should be able to remember otherwise it will be very difficult for you all this cross section you know basically you should be knowing the moment of inertia just go back to the basics and try to learn that you cannot ignore as you can see the questions are there in the aerospace right now just read the formula that's it about the ixx about y y y you know moment of inertia for triangular section for rectangular section for this one for semicircle all this formula you should able to remember otherwise will be difficulty will be there if you take any gere book any book you know you will be able to find the all the properties you know moment of inertia is a property of the cross section so you can able to find all the values there now we will try to solve this particular problem how we can proceed let's see a 3 into 1 sign board is supported by the vertical hollow pole that means this hollow pole is a top view what they have shown now right what they have shown that is a top view that is being standing like this you know so that is nothing but the top view when you see from the top that is what the cross section you can see for this particular pole right that is fixed to the ground just like a cantilever beam the pole has a square cross section with the outer dimension uh, dimensions they have given as 250 mm outside dimension 250 mm the yield strength of the pole the yield strength is given as 240 mega pascal to sustain a wind pressure of 7.5 kilo pascal what should be the dimension of the d what should be the dimension d of the pole now focus when the wind pressure will be acting on this particular board sign board it will be acting like this just like a uniformly distributed load my different it is going to be acting like this when it is acting like a uniformly distributed load when it is acting like just like a uniformly distributed load we know that where exactly the centroid of that of the sign board the centroid will be somewhere here cg will be here and that particular wind pressure will be just focus their attention on that centroid right so what is the force due to wind pressure p into area of that particular sign board what is the pressure 7.5 and what is the area 3 into 1 so when you just calculate you will be getting what 22.5 kilo newton of force this is the force my dear friend that you are getting yeah that is correct that is correct that is the force you are getting you know so my dear friend once we got the force what should be the equivalent diagram what should be the equivalent diagram this was the height of the pole this was my height of the pole 5.5 meter additional additional i am considering 0.5 meter from here to here what is the centroid 0.5 meter right so this is my pressure force which is being applied like this if i draw the free body diagram of the pole that is what my situation would be right what is the maximum bending moment which is being applied at the support 
f into 6. What is the force? 22.5 into 10 power 3 into 6 Newton meter. That is the maximum bending moment, my dear friend, that is being applied. That is the maximum bending moment that is being applied. That is the maximum bending moment as you can apply to this particular pole. Getting my point? Once we get to know this particular scenario, what we can have? The next thing we have to calculate the bending stress, right? And bending stress we have to equate to what? Yield stress. Maximum to maximum, there is no factor of 50 the equivalent. When there is no factor of 50, my dear friend, we can equate the bending stress to the yield stress. And in that scenario, in that such a scenario, what we could have, we, we can have this particular thing as bending stress that is a yield stress that is a 240 megapascal that is equal to what m into y by i right so further what we can write my different 240 megapascal that is equal to what see guys you have to be very very careful about the problem statement wind pressure will not be acting exactly at one particular point like this it will be throughout the sign board it will be acting so we need to find the center of sign board there only it will be considered just like a uniformly distributed load. It is considered exactly at the centroid. W, which is being acting over the length of, for example, L. Then what we used to write, W into L, that is being focused at the centroid of that particular length. Similar concept has been applied over here. Moment will be what? 22.5 into 10 power 3 into 6 Newton mm. 10 power 3 once again. 1 meter will be 10 power 3 mm. Right. What about the Y? The Y will be taken care of from what? From the neutral axis to top fiber. Because we know that from the top and bottom, the maximum bending stress is going to be occurred. So what we can have the Y maximum? See, we, we are calculating the maximum bending stress. That's why the Y will be maximum. We are calculating what is the maximum bending stress so that it is reaching to the yield stress value. Right. So Y maximum will be 250 divided by 2. I will be what? Everybody know that moment of inertia for the hollow square pole or hollow square section will be what? 250 to the power 4 divided by 12 minus d power 4 divided by 12. Getting my point. So now when you just do the calculations, you're going to get d as 235.244 mm. So they are asking nearest integer means what? 235. Right? So remember guys, these are the very, very important statement. Nearest integer. When you put in the examination 235.244, uh, after all of your uh, putting lot of effort, you will be getting zero marks. That is not the range of this question. The range of this question will be given as 235 to 235. For example, if it is 235 to 237, you are safe side. Right? So, but I don't think so. They will be giving you the that much of a strict uh, 235 to 235. You know, in fact, for this question, what was the range? I have not seen the official answer. But I'm pretty sure that the range would be, you know, 235 to 236 or 237 like that. But whenever they will be asking you in integer, round up to nearest integer only. Right. These are some of the important basic thing of gate exam. Now some of you, what they will do, you know, they will just take the force like this, here only. Wind pressure force 22.5 without taking this 0.5. You will be getting the answer, but that answer may be some out of the range. Who, who knows? If you are lucky enough, the answer will be within the range of that. But if you are unlucky, then gone. Right? So try to stick with the concept. Some of you might be thinking that this will be concentrated at the tip of the pole. But it is not like that. It is a uniformly distributed load. It will be concentrated at the center of gravity of the sign board. So from here to here, this is a pole. And this is the, these are the part of the sign board. You need not a lot of practice, guys, for gate exam. It is not like you if you practice 
one day you wake up in the morning and you just practicing strength the material i'll be happy solving the forget exam it it will it won't work there because every time you turn the pages of the previous year questions you will see lot of varieties of the question of the strength the material there is a no fixed pattern once again i am telling you uh, once again there is a no fixed pattern of the questions if you thinking that my favorite topic is principal stress question will be coming nobody can predict that maybe zero question will be there from the principal stress and the maximum question will be there from the deflection who knows that so try to treat every chapter as the favorite sub, uh, um, basically chapters you know there should not be any favoritism to specifically any individual chapters all the chapters should be on the priority list not chapter wise it should be subject also even though you are learning any single formula of any subject that should be your priority that should be you should be learning like anything that particular formula from where it is coming how it is coming all those stuff because the moment you are thinking that this will not be asked gate will ask that point you just turn the pages of the previous questions you have the books from 2007 onwards and you can see the beauty of gate exams the moment you are about to leave the topic that topic is coming in gate exam maybe you can predict about your life but you cannot predict about the questions in gate examinations that is about the harsh reality of gate exam now this particular question this this year they have asked a very silly questions of from the strength of material but lot many questions they have asked from this you know basic strength of material not from the thin wall structures a beam with the symmetrical t sections as shown in the figure subjected to a pure bending ma maximum magnitude of the normal stress will be realized where exactly see this is a t sections if you don't know fundamental concept of center of gravity then you cannot solve this this is my t section my different try understanding for finding the t section uh, basically what maximum magnitude of the normal stress where exactly it would be for that we need to calculate the center of gravity because somebody told you in the last particular this class only that center of gravity center of gravity will coincide with the neutral axis your centroid of this particular section t section will automatically will become what neutral axis because there is no axial force when there is no axial force simply find the center of gravity that will become a neutral axis and you know that the fundamental concept of engineering mechanics that is nothing but whenever we have from any section we have some something like this particular sections wherever we have the more area centroid will be shifted there itself you can solve this particular problem by taking the numerical data also you know suppose 250 mm suppose 20 mm 20 mm 180 mm for example for example you can just calculate you can take it as a homework and you can find the centroid of this section you can take this particular axis y axis which is passing through the middle of that and x axis you can take something something like this right so definitely my different what you going to get you will be getting the values of what something like this you know so try understanding what is going to be happening yes that is correct here where we have the more area above or below if you just focus your attention where we have the more areas above the neutral axis or below the neutral axis above the neutral axis right above the neutral axis we have the more area getting my point when we have above the neutral axis more area the centroid will be shifted there means if you just take the middle part of that 180 plus 20 that is 200 200 divided by 2 so somewhere here the middle section would be there right somewhere here the middle section would be there above and below the middle sections you have to observe where the more area centroid will be shifted there itself so here also centroid will be shifted just above like that so this will be centroid cd the neutral axis will pass through that particular centroid we have already proved that we have already 
prove that you know so definitely centroid you will not be getting exactly at 100 mm see from top and bottom we have 100 mm for example but centroid will be shifted towards the above 100 mm not below 100 mm because more area is there itself so now we got the equivalent diagram something like this This is my centroid. If this is my centroid, my dear friend, what we can make the plot. Bending stress will be zero at the neutral axis. Everybody know that. Now tell me this distance is more or this particular distance is more. This is sigma one. Let me just for sigma two. This is sigma one. Sigma is directly proportional to y, my dear friend. 100 mm is there. From the bottom, and we already seen that it will be more than 100 mm. So y1 will be more than y2. This particular distance will be more than this top distance. You know, when y1 will be more than y2, obviously sigma 1 will be more than sigma 2. When sigma 1 is more than sigma 2, that will be the maximum normal stress. That will be the maximum normal stress because of the bending stress, because of the bending. So definitely only the top fiber, only the bottom fiber will be what? subjected to maximum bending stress we will be correct till now what we have seen we have seen symmetric cross sections like this above or below same area exactly middle the centroid will be there exactly middle will be the neutral axis that's why we got uh, we got no confusion there sigma one sigma one above below top fiber bottom fiber they will be subjected to tensile and compressive but the magnitude will be same but at this particular point for the t sections the top fiber will be subjected to lesser bending stress as compared to bottom fibers make a note of it if you know the concept of centroid you can solve this particular problem within 10 seconds right Now, somebody who just want to have the feeling, sir, y1 is more than y2, how can I prove, sir? I have given the question with the data also. You just solve it and try to find y bar for this particular section from the bottom fiber, from the bottom x-axis. You will be getting more than 100 mm. You will be getting more than 100 mm. If it would be 100 mm, then top and bottom will be same. But we know that it is an unsymmetric cross-section, right? It is symmetric about the y-axis, but it is unsymmetric about the x-axis. So definitely we're going to see shifting of the centroid from the middle portions, right? Is it done? Then for all. Tell me guys. All of you have noted down. Then. Now. Sigma and tau will be the normal stress as well as shear stress on a particular plane respectively. The Bohr circle that may be possible to represent the state of stress in a point in a beam of rectangular cross sections under pure bending. Right. So, if I just take the rectangular cross sections, for example, this would be subjected to a beam is there. 
beam is subjected to a bending like this. For example, for example, pure bending means there is no axial force, nothing is gonna be there. Only bending will be there for the particular beam. So, what will be the state of stress conditions? What will be the state of stress for the top fiber? Top fiber will be subjected to compression. The top fiber will be subjected to compression, right? See guys, if I just draw the equivalent diagram, some of you might be thinking, sir, why we call norm bending stress to be the normal stress? That is the most silly doubt you will ever gonna get. See, we can apply the force like this and like this, and still we can able to produce the movement. So either you represent like this or like this, both are same meaning. And once again, I'm telling you, force is what? This bending force is what? Normal to the directions. Normal to the plane, plane cross sections. That's why normal stress we call that bending stress. So normal stress is not only because of the axial stress or axial force. It, it is also because of the bending stress. Whatever the bending is there, that bending stress is also called as normal stress, right? And what about the Mohs circle for this one? Everybody know that. This will be the Mohs circle for the top fiber. But the bottom fiber, if I take, if I take the bottom fiber, this is going to be subjected to normal stress, something like this tensile, you know. So when I just plot it, I will be getting what something like this. I have discussed how and why and how we can draw what is the procedure. You just go back to the more circle, right? So what will be the answer? B is correct. C is correct. That will be the answer. That was the MSQ question. This year you will see a lot many MSQ. That I can predict. Uh, that to a very good level of the theoretical questions. Done for all. Let's see one of the beautiful problem you ever come across in the strength of material. See this one. For solving this particular problem within three minutes in get exam, this type of problem. See after get exam, you can have the uh, basically lot amount, lot many amount of times, and you can you know basically solve this problem very comfortably. But get exam during three minutes in a very high pressure game, you know. How to proceed with this particular problem? If any fundamental will be lagging, you cannot solve this particular problem. Right? I'm not saying it's a very tough. It is damn easy only. Right? But for that, you need some patience to solve this particular problem. Right? Because there is not the exactly my different what we have discussed just now. Pure bending. Here, what is happening? It is also, of course, a case of pure bending. But along with the bending, we will be having some axial force also. Right? And if you are basically students of mine, you will not be having an, any, any single doubt. Try to see why I'm saying you will not be having a single doubt. Understand this was the longitudinal axis, which is passing through exactly the center of that particular beam. And the load has been applied at the eccentric distance. 10 kilo Newton, right? Now, Understand and just appreciate the beauty of these questions, what they have asked. Now, some of you, you might be thinking, sir, it's uh, instead of basically putting my head into this problem, I will leave this problem. How many problems you will be able to leave this in the get exam? This problem, next, gas dynamics, leave that particular problem also. Next, 
proposal leave that particular problem so how many problem you leave if you leave multiple uh, good problems automatically your rank will be disastrous if you are not able to solve a very good enough challenging problem your automatically rank will be down because you will come to the category of what category of the what we say the crowd that particular crowd is having a very low marks right now in this one we have the eccentricity distance e e they have given as what they have given the cross section as something like this 1 cm 1 cm the centroid would be exactly the 5.5 cm my dear friend the centroid would be exactly the centroid would be exactly something like this right now so what once again what they have mentions the strain measures at the top, basically two strain gauge attached on the top and the bottom surface my dear friend the strain gauge this is nothing but the strain gauge right this is nothing but the strain gauge the strain gauge measures normal strain or basically longitudinal strain the strain gauge measures longitudinal strain right that is epsilon is what directly proportional to y here longitudinal strain is what in the bending directly proportional to y that's how we have seen in our particular chapter what we have started our derivation with that only in the bending stress chapter what about the eccentricity distance can please tell somebody that we need to find what about the distance is there e value that is what we need to find if i able to convert this particular diagram into equivalent diagram what is the equivalent diagram for this particular problem understand whenever any load is not passing through the centroid and if i want to transfer my load to the centroid what i will do i told you the basic fundamental logic or method to solve to shift the loading how to shift the loading introduce introduce two loads exactly equal and opposite of magnitude 10 kN i want to transfer my load to the centroid right introduce two loads which is of equal in magnitude but opposite in direction pp and of course these are the 10 kN 10 kN right because ultimately i'll be getting the same diagram you know this will cancel out this will cancel out ultimately i'll be getting the same diagram so there is a no harm of introducing the two equal and opposite forces but further if i just convert equivalent diagram what i'll be getting focus for this type of problem only we do lot of practice you know while just solving the hardly 50 problem or 60 problem you cannot attack this type of problem until then we practice at least at least more than 100 problem in send the material right now this will be the p that is 10 kN and this p and this p will make a couple in this directions bending moment will be what 10 into e that is kN mm for example i am just calculating in mm so it's better that uh, let me write the cross section in mm that will be a good one 1 cm 10 mm 1 cm 10 mm that will be the better one so make a note of it now my dear friend you just tell me you only just tell me because of this particular diagram on the top fiber on the top fiber top fiber will be subjected to what normal tensile stress because of the bending if i draw my dear friend two diagrams one will be the normal stress because of the normal stress this will be the diagram and because of the bending this will be the diagrams something something like this so because of the normal stress and because of the bending we got two diagrams and can somebody tell me if i superimpose these two diagrams the top fiber what is the sigma top total 
because of the normal stress whether tensile is there or compressive is there because of the axial force it is getting subjected to tensile stress or compressive stress tell me guys tell me guys because of the because of the normal force which is passing through the centroid of the cross sections would produce the tensile stress or compressive stress tensile stress i should write plus 10 into 1000 divided by area what should be the area 10 into 10 because of the bending because of the bending top fiber will be subjected to what tensile or compressive because of the bending whatever the bending stress we also call normal stress that is also in the x directions will produce will produce the tensile stress or compressive stress tensile stress so i should write plus and what is the magnitude m y by i so 10 into 1000 divided by 10 into 10 this problem is very easy just believe me outside sources will tell a uh, lot many things about this particular problem a very tough one where cannot be solved in gate exam those are the rubbish talk focus on your fundamental each and every problem can be solved very comfortably in gate examinations right m y by i what is the moment the moment will be 10 into e kilo newton convert into newton mm 10 power 3 and what is the fiber distance y what about the fiber distance 10 by 2 that is pi what about the moment of inertia 10 into 10 to the power 3 divided by 12 because bd cube by 12 but here the, that is nothing but the square section so we can write 10 to the power 4 divided by 12 once you do that you will be getting some answer in terms of e right you just simplify that and let me know sigma top what you are getting sigma top what you are getting 10 into 1000 divided by 10 divided by 10 so we are getting 100 plus 10 into Ten into sorry, ten into thousand into five into twelve divided by ten divided by thousand. So I'll be getting sixty. This is my different sigma top. This is nothing but sigma top, right? What about sigma bottom? Let's calculate sigma bottom also. That is also very very important. Make a note of it till this point. Once it is done, let me know. Do not focus much on topper stock. Right? Try to work hard and become own topper. What about their struggles? Never gonna be rebuilt, right? So whatever they will talk, you just. take whatever the things that is going to be helpful for you right but do not completely attach with their emotions you know if they are saying that strength of material i leave completely the questions i have not able to solve it doesn't mean that you also not able to solve that right don't think like that correct that is correct because of the normal stress it will be tensile but because of the bending it will be compressive so the result will be plus as well as minus right let's see let me write that then we can make a note of it sigma bottom total because of the normal stress it will be 10 into 1000 load divided by area and because of the bending m y by i so once again i will be writing 10 into 1000 Divided by ten into ten minus bending moment. What is the bending moment which is being applied? Ten into thousand into e. Y is what? Once again five. Once again it is five. Divided by i. Ten power four divided by twelve. So if we just do that, we'll be getting what? Hundred minus sixty. 
sigma b total sigma b total right sigma b total <coughs> by looking at this you know while looking at this particular diagram understand sigma epsilon 1 they have given something like this and epsilon 2 they have given something like this right epsilon 1 on the top fiber they have given the normal strain as 0 0.016 mm uh, 0 0.016 0 0.0016 they have given 0 0.0016 and epsilon 2 that is on the bottom fiber they have given 0 0.0004 one triple zero four. They have given this particular scenario, right? So what we can write, my dear friend, what we can write according to Hooke's law. According to Hooke's law, we know that sigma is what directly proportional to epsilon. Sigma is what directly proportional to epsilon, right? And in the bending stress chapter also, what we have seen, m by i is equal to what sigma by y, and we all already seen that e by r. So what we can write? Already we have seen epsilon is what? Y divided by R. So sigma is what? Y divided by R into E. So sigma is what? Epsilon into E. Right? So according to Hooke's law, sigma is directly proportional to Y. So sigma top will be directly proportional to epsilon top. So in such a way that we can write sigma top divided by epsilon top is equal to sigma bottom divided by epsilon bottom. Sigma top, what we know? 100 plus 60. Sigma bottom, uh, sigma top, uh, epsilon top, what they have given? 0 0.016. This particular thing they have given 100 minus 60 divided by 0 0.004. So if you just further divide it, I will be getting what? 4. So this will be 100 plus 60E. That is equal to 400 minus 240E. So that is number 300E that is equal to what? 300. So E will be what? 1 mm. That will be the answer. If I would not be telling you the derivation of bending stress, you never gonna get the feeling that we have used the Hooke's law in our derivations in deriving this formula. Right? In this one, in this one, if I'll be asking you, where the position of the neutral, neutral axis, what you will say. One more step ahead of the gate examinations. If I'll be asking, gate examination is over, done and dusted. We got the answer for this problem. But one more question, if I'll be asking you, position of the neutral axis. Note down one more question. Position of the neutral axis would be what? Is it coinciding with the basically centroidal axis? Or it is coinciding with the top fiber? Or it is coinciding with the bottom fiber, or it is away from the plane of the cross sections. That is what we need to answer, right? Before that, you just complete it, then we can see. When you practice multiple times any subject, all the question will look very easy, like this only. In gate exam also, in the high pressure game also, it will look very easy for you. But if practice will not be there, any new question, you will think that it is just coming out of the box. If there is no neutral axis, how the bending is happening? How we are able to use the bending stress formula if there is no neutral axis? Now understand. Understand the beauty of this particular problem. My dear friend, the normal strain they have given positive value or negative value? The normal strain, while looking at this particular picture, whatever the normal strain, 
is given or measure from the strain gauge is positive or negative just look at the both the values and tell me the answer both are positive both are positive and if you just put e value as 1 mm over here you will be getting sigma bottom also or positive that means tensile what about sigma top tensile so if i just superimpose these two diagrams together what i will be getting focus try to understand when we apply the axial force and bending moment both are there right now axial force and bending moment both are there definitely there's a no chance that the neutral axis will coincide with the centroidal axis we have already proved that when the axial force is zero this would have been zero only pure bending the neutral axis would have been coinciding with this particular centroidal axis but right now there is axial force we are getting nobody can stop the neutral axis to shift from the centroidal axis let's see where it is being shifted my dear friend sigma top what we are getting the sigma top we are getting the 100 plus 60 that is equal to 160 mega pascal what about sigma bottom 100 minus 60 we are getting 40 mega pascal both are tensile together not because of the bending together tensile tensile so if i'll draw the combined diagram i would be getting tensile here here also tensile and if i just join head to head what is the position of the neutral axis the neutral axis is the basically axis where the bending stress is zero so now you can see the bending stress is zero outside the plane of cross sections this will be my neutral axis out of the cross sections right so this will be 160, this will be 40. So this will be the position of the neutral axis, my dear friend. This will be y2, this will be something like y1. Make a note of it. It will not coincide with the neutral axis, right? That's why note down important note point in presence of eccentric loading. In presence of eccentric, in presence of eccentric loading, in presence of eccentric loading. Eccentric axial loading, neutral axis. That's why you see it is a tensile stress. That's why if you are putting the what the gauge, strain gauge, it will measure the positive value, not the negative value. Right? In presence of eccentric axial load, the neutral axis may coincide. With the any axis of the with any one of the extreme fiber or inner fiber or it can lie outside the plane of cross sections. Right. So in all we can say so neutral axis will not coincide with the centroidal axis in the plane uh, in the plane of cross section always. That is asked multiple times in gate examinations.
all these are problems, you know, all this even more challenging problems than this one. Given in the gear, right? Lot many problems are given in unsolved examples or solved examples, right? If you solve it, then definitely gear examination will look like very tiny exam. Yes, you won't believe that, but it is a hard, harsh reality that if you practice enough regularly, then each and every question will look very easy. This is true for all the subjects, not only strength of material. Because while solving unsolved example of the gere, you might be asking so many doubt to yourself. And you will be always be in a struggle that whether I'll be getting the answer or not. You will be always be getting stuck in some, some of these steps. But those struggle will make you strong for the actual gate examinations, right? For the day of gate exam. If you are not doing those struggles before gate exam, all this struggle will come out at the end of the day, that is on the day of gate exams, and you will be end up getting a very low marks. That's why we have the famous quote, you know, every effort will not be gonna waste at the end of the day. Every effort will count. Whatever the question you are solving, one question, that will be counted. So don't think that I'm wasting time basically solving the question of Gary and all or some other stuff. Now, all of you have noted down? Is it done for all? Tell me guys. Is it done? Now, so again, once again, we have to find the second moment of area. Second moment of area is also called as second moment of area is also called as moment of inertia. Second moment of area. Just because those who are not aware that second moment of area is called moment of inertia, because of that only they have framed the question. That's it. A thin wall I section of the width of two flanges. This is called flange. This is called web section, you know. You will understand in more detail about these things in thin wall structures. You know? 2B they have given as 20 mm. Thickness they have given as 0 0.6, 0 0.6. This also 0 0.6. What we need to find, my dear friend, we need to find what is the moment of inertia about the horizontal axis, which is passing through the centroid. About this xx axis, we need to find moment of inertia, ixx. Try that one. We can solve this this particular problem by two methods. You know, one is a lengthy procedure, one is shortcut. You can consider this cross section as equivalent diagram made up of one big section, one big section like this, which is having a dimension as twenty, and this as this is nothing but twenty twenty plus 
1.2 mm this is 20 mm 0.6 into 2 plus 20 that is 21.2 so what we can have i can subtract with this one this small small section if i just do subtractions of this small sections a small two section i can make it to the large section like this which is having a dimension as 20 minus 0.6 would be what 20 minus 0.6 would be 19.4 minus of uh, sorry 19.4 and the height will be what height will be 20 so the why we are converting into two equal rectangular cross sections because we know the moment of inertia about the rectangular cross sections about the centroid about the centroid so indirectly i'll be getting what this diagram only at the end of the day right so finally what we can make what about the moment of inertia for this one moment of inertia of the big rectangular about the ixx 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 means the dimension which are parallel i'll be writing 20 21.2 whole cube divided by 12 minus i will be writing for this section as 19.4 into 20 cube divided by 12 like this right so 20 into 21.2 whole cube divided by 12 minus what 19.4 into 20 whole cube divided by 12 2946 i'll be getting the answer Check it out how much you are getting. If we just do subtraction like this, you will be getting what? Same answer or not? A big section, if you just uh, basically subtract these sections, you will be getting the I sections. And what about the dimensions of combined dimensions? Nineteen point four. This will be 19.4 divided by 2. This will be 19.4 divided by 2. Right. And the height would be 20. Understanding or not, all of you? All of you are understanding? Correct. Once it is done, let me know. Many examples are given in the uh, Hibbler, you know, if you just follow moment of inertia calculations or you can just follow BC Puramia, whatever the book I have said, in that one chapter is there, complete dedicated chapter for centroid and moment of inertia. You can follow BC Puramia. In Gere and Hibbler, it is not given. So this particular problem uh, book you can follow for centroid and moment of inertia chapter, right? Because it can be given lot many examples, you know, something like this. I can make the figure. What about the moment of inertia about the I, Y, Y? You know, lot many examples I can ask, you know. Until unless you know the concept, it will be very difficult for solving. So at least solve at least 10 examples, right? Before get example, uh, before get exam. Regarding moment of inertia as well as centroid calculations. Now, 
Now, try to solve this particular problem. A thin wall tube with the external radius of 100 mm and wall thickness 2 mm is being fixed at one end. A thin wall tube It is being subjected to a compressive load, a compressive force of exactly F, 1 Newton, at the circumference parallel to the length. External radius, what they have given, 100 mm. Thickness, what you are observing, they have given thickness as 2 mm. They are asking what should be the normal stress that can be applied or a structure uh, basically this is structure will experience So uh, what we can do, we can just solve it very easily, this one. Once again, we will transfer the load to the centroid. We'll introduce two load. So if I just make the equivalent diagram, it will be like this. It will be compressive force. And because of this and this, it will make a couple like this. They are asking what is the maximum normal stress experienced. See, the top fiber will be subjected to compressive by both. The bottom fiber is subjected to what? Compressive because of the axial force and tensile because of that. So net will be lesser as compared to the top one, right? Because in the top, both are compressive. Both are maximum, negative. So sigma top, we can write force divided by area plus my by i. But all will be what? Negative. So minus of F. Force we know that 1 Newton they have given. Divided by area. What is the area my dear friends? On which particular area which is being applied? What is the area on which this particular load has been applied? Pi by 4. D naught square minus D I square. This will be the circular cross section, you know, the hollow circular cross sections. This will be the hollow circular cross section, my friend. And if you just see that, this will be di. This will be d naught. So di naught square minus di square, that will be the area on which this load has been there. Because if material is there, then only that material will be able to resist, you know, something like this. Now, some of you, you will use the formula pi dt, but that is the approximation. Do not use that, right? I will tell you in detail about these things in torsion chapter. Plus my by i. What is the moment? 1 into radius is what? 100 mm. That is the moment. Y. What is the distance? Again, 100 divided by i. What is the moment of initial for a hollow circular cross section? Pi d naught power 4 minus di power 4 divided by 64. Once again, I'm telling you, please remember moment of inertia formula for all the sections, right? Otherwise, you will be in a deep trouble in gate exam. So, my dear friend, what we can see? D naught. D naught is 200 mm. That is being given in the questions, my dear friend. External radius they have given as 100. So, if I multiply with the 2, that is going to be D naught. And D i will be what? D i will be what, my dear friend? D i will be D naught minus 2 t. 200 minus 2 into 2, that is going to be 196 mm, my dear friend, right? So if you just put the top fiber, that is the maximum stress is going to be produced, minus of F, 1 Newton divided by 4 by pi, D naught. 200 minus 196 square, that is going to be 100 into 100, into 64 into pi, divided by what? 
200 power 4 minus 196 to the power 4. So what we're going to get out of it? Please calculate. No, that is not correct, I think. They are asking in kilopascal, so final answer will be megapascal. You know, if I convert megapascal into kilopascal, I need to multiply with thousand, right? So if you just calculate whole this one, you will be getting approximately minus two point four four. Right? This will be the answer minus two point four four. Right? And do not forget to mention the negative sign because they have not asked the magnitude of the maximum normal stress. They have asked in the problem maximum normal stress. That's it. So we have to multiply with the minus n also in examinations. In fact, sometimes they mention include the negative value for compressive, positive value for tensile, something like that. They will they will give the hint also, but sometimes they they won't give the hint also. Do not use the approximate formula pi dt. Pi mean diameter into t. You can use it, but sometime it may be you, you will be in a trouble to get the answer within the range. You know, it's better that you use the exact formula. This is the exact formula. Whatever we have written, these are the exact formulas. Not the approximations. And how we are getting exact to approximate equations? A formula we will discuss in torsion chapters, right? Done. Again, all this type of problem has been given. Many examples are there in the game. Many, many examples. In fact, your center material, if somebody will be asking you from where they are copying this thing, see, Gere. They have one source, Gere, directly, blindly, they are wake, uh, wake up in the morning and they copy paste in gate exam. If you ask fluid mechanics, NPDL assignment questions, directly copy paste. Again, NPTEL assignment is not by some other scholar that is being prepared by the ID professor only. So instead of wasting time, again, preparing the questions directly, they take the question from there itself. As you can verify a lot, many previous questions are directly copy paste from NPTEL assignments. Try to solve this particular problem and let me know the answer. This also has been asked in gate A paper. A cantilever beam which is being subjected to cantilever beam. A cantilever beam, my dear friend, of rectangular cross sections of rectangular cross sections of what? 60 mm. And depth is what 100 mm is made up of aluminum alloy. Young's models for aluminum alloy is given as 73 gigapascal. Ultimate stress they have given 480 megapascal. Factor of safety they have given 4. What is the maximum bending moment that can be applied onto the beam? Right? So, what is the maximum bending moment that can be applied onto the beam? They are asking. So, here once again. We have to use the bending stress formula. Sigma maximum because of the bending. Should be less than or equal to what? Sigma failure stress. Right? 
but here whatever the failure stress is there you know we have to divide by factor of 50 because they have given in the question factor of 50 also so sigma maximum must be less than or equal to 480 divided by 4 so whatever the sigma maximum that is equal to what m into y maximum by i should be m maximum also here it will be m maximum into y maximum divided by i should be less than or equal to what 120 mega pascal y we know that that is 50 i we know that that is 60 into 100 cube divided by 12 should be less than or equal to what 20 so from here if you just calculate Remember, whatever the bending is there, that bending is happening about the i axis. Right? So, what we can write here 15 to 12 divided by 60 divided by 100, 1000. So, I will be getting MS 12,000 Newton meter. They are asking in kilometer, kilo Newton meter, so that will be 12 kilo Newton. Meter, that will be the answer. Please check it out. No, that is not correct. I think just please check it out. How much? 100 cube divided by 12, you know, so what is the value? 15 to 12 divided by 60 divided by 100 cube. That is correct only 12 kilo Newton meter because from here whatever the answer you will get you will be getting newton mm so you need to divide by 10 power 6 directly to get into kilo newton meter right so that will be correct remember whatever the maximum stress will be there that should be less than allowable stress and what is the allowable stress? How to find allowable stress? Failure stress by factor of safety. Failure stress by factor of safety. This is the formula we have. Now, try to see this particular problem. A cylinder structure is subjected to four different types of loading condition. Now, please try it and let me know the answer to this question. Which, appear, uh, which, of, which pair of the cases results in identical stress distributions at a section SX, SS away from the both the ends? Identical stress distribution means 
similar just like a axial distributions like this equal stress distributions so very first case is normal axial force is there so definitely we're gonna have like this in the case of second case what you are observing 3p by 8 3p by 8 right so if i just take the centroid somewhere so this 3p by 8 will create the moment will create the moment and they will cancel out same moment they are creating p by 8 and p by 8 they will also create the moment again they will cancel out but they will be creating one axial force you know 3p by 8 plus 3p by 8 plus p by 8 plus p by 8 so what we are getting p only so once again we will be having what identical stress distributions so here only we got the answer but let's see the third and fourth option also 3p by 8 and 3p by 8 they will create the moment like this this 3p by, p by 8 and p by 8 will create the moment like this you know so the net moment will be some kind of moment like this as well as the axial force so definitely stress distribution will not be uniform similarly here also they will create the moment like this and this will also create the moment like this along with this normal force you know p because how to transfer the load i told you know 3p by 8 this is 3p by 8 if we just transfer the load equivalent diagram to the centroid so 3p by 8 plus 3p by 8 the load will be acting plus there will be some movement this movement and this movement this one and this one will create the movement you know? no there will not be any axial force you know there will not be any axial force because they will cancel out very first of all for this case you introduce two loads so you will be getting what 3p by 8 first of all and there will be some movement for this case what is going to be there you will be getting what 3p by 8 and you will be getting some movement once again so this will cancel out it will result to only what bending right 3p by 8 into whatever the distance d getting my point or not and if there is a pure bending, then the stress distribution will be like this. Yes or no, guys? All of you are getting my point? And that is not the identical stress distributions. Then three 
remaining all other problems you can solve about this particular bending stress chapter no doubt transfer shear no doubt transfer shear till now we have neglected the shear force you know in case of pure bending we have neglected the shear force but what if we we have to consider the shear force also in that case there will be some direct shear stress because of the shear force will be acting till now we have seen that when the force has been applied w and this beam is made up of some cross sections this particular beam uh, cross section will be subjected to some direct shear stress some direct shear stress w by 2 w by 2 and because of this shear force there will be some direct shear stress as you can see in the plane of cross sections and you know that by the concept of complementary nature of this shear stress when the stress will be developed like this definitely one more phase will be there that is also subjected to what stress shear stress and this will also be subjected to like this and this will also be subjected to like this because of the complementary nature of the shear stress now what is the condition what is going to be happening because of this shear because of the shear force because of the shear force there will be some shear deformations and that shear deformation will be not a linear one just like what we have seen in the bending right so here when you just observe very carefully before bending but after bending after shear force you know after shear force application of the shear force after application of the shear force this will be deform something like this right that particular line or curvature will not be remains to be this you know this particular vertical line in bending you might have seen that this line was something like this that is not curvature but here you can see there is a curvature is there right so that is because of the shear deformations note down a very important formula to calculate the shear stress only single formula is there but very important formula tau will be called as vq divided by it vq means we can also write tau is equal to v into a into y bar divided by i multiplied by t note down each and everything tau is nothing but the shear force shear stress that will be developed at a particular point in a member at a distance y dash from the neutral, neutral axis v is nothing but the internal shear force moment of inertia of the entire cross sections about the neutral axis t is nothing but the width of the sections q is nothing but the second uh, basically the first moment of area that is a into y bar a dash is nothing but the area what is the a dash let me just tell you suppose this is a rectangular cross sections and this is my neutral axis from the neutral axis i have taken at a distance y some area some fiber on that particular fiber above whatever the area is there a dash is nothing but this one if i want to calculate at this layer what is the shear stress for example and if i want to calculate shear stress at this fiber i need to take the area above that fiber i need to take the area above that particular fiber right that will be a dash y bar dash will be y bar dash will be centroid of that particular cross section y bar dash will be centroid of that particular hedged portion of respective centroid from the neutral axis that will be the y dash the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of a dash right make a note of it
let's derive the formula for a very simple rectangular cross sections Done. This is nothing but the thickness of this section. We used to write width as W, but as it is given T, so let's go with the T. Now, is it, it is done all of you, all of you have noted down. Then. Is it done? Now, try to see the derivations of rectangular cross sections. You just note down. Rectangular cross sections. I will be taking one rectangular cross section which is being subjected to a shear force. Air force right and i will be taking one section on which i need to find the centroid at a distance y from the neutral axis the complete depth you can take as d width you can take it as b so at this fiber i have taken so what about this area i will be taking separately i am drawing separately actually this is the area right which is having a width b and what about the depth the depth would be d minus 2 minus y d by 2 minus y right that will be the depth of this section where we have considered the section right so what about the shear stress formula that we know the shear stress formula that we know is F A Y bar divided by I multiplied by B. B or T, whatever it may be. Sale force, let's say F only. Area, what is the area of that section? B into D by 2 minus Y. What about the Y bar of that section from the centroidal, uh, from the neutral axis? This will be Y bar. How to calculate that? Easy one. First of all, calculate the centroid from here to here. And you just add with the y, you know. So what about the centroid d by 2 minus y divided by 2. That is what the centroid of the any rectangular section plus y. Moment of initial bdq by 12. Width will be b. 
So finally, what we're gonna get? F into B while be getting what? I will be getting D by D by four minus Y by two plus Y. So D by four plus Y by two. So what I'll be getting D by four plus Y by two divided by BD cube by 12. So B square D cube by 12. So tau I can write F into B. See this I can write further as D by 1 upon 2 D by 2 plus Y. A plus B A minus B will become A square minus B square. So D by 2 square minus Y square, right? Something like that I can write into 1 upon 2 divided by B square D cube divided by 12. So finally, what I can write, see, it's a, just a simplification, you know, that we have to do. 6F B or we can write 6F divided by BD square BD cube, no? d by 2 whole square minus y square. Why I am doing the derivation? Because I need to prove that the shared stress variations will be a parabolic variations. Just like what you have seen, the bending stress is a linear one. Here the shared stress variation would be the shared stress variation would be would be linear one. Make a note of it. Their stress variation would be, uh, sorry, parabolic one. And how to draw the parabolic variations? Let's see. Done. Is it done all of you? So this will be my series stress variations. Let me show that. On the top, on the top fiber, on the top and the bottom, what will be the shear stress? Six F divided by B D cube, D by two whole square minus Y square, where Y is varying from the neutral axis. Everybody know that. When the Y will be D by two, when Y will be D by two, my dear friend, the shear stress will be zero, and Y is equal to minus D by two, then also shear stress will be zero. Top, bottom, zero. And what about the neutral axis? When the Y is zero, maximum. Maximum stress, shear stress would be there. This would be a parabolic variation. Make a note of it. Exactly at the centroid, it would be maximum. On the top, on the bottom, it will be zero. Unlike bending stress, that is going to be 
the case because you, everybody know that without without move, uh, basically the safe force uh, basically uh, sorry without safe force the bending moment can be there or bending stress can be there but without bending moment there's a no possibilities of shear stress or the safe force right so definitely there will be bending stress also at the neutral axis it is going to be zero at the top and the bottom fiber it will be maximum so this is what you have the bending stress distributions and this is what we have the shear stress distributions make a note of it so if if i want to relate what is the tau average if i want to just calculate what is the tau average then what i need to do shear force divided by area area is what bd so here what i can just tell you tau maximum is what when y is equal to what 0 6f divided by what bd cube into d square by 4 i would be getting 3 by 2 times of f divided by bd i would be getting 3 by 2 times of tau average right so this particular relation is applicable applicable for this section which section or rectangular sections triangular sections square sections so i am closing my session now because i have some work remaining thing i will conclude in the next session and in the next class we will we will be starting the the concept of a uh, thin cylinder right i think tuesday uh, wednesday we will be having the class so that is the average formula we have you know average formula what is the average normal stress force divided by area same like what we used to write Post development area only, right? That means if this would have been average distributions, as compared to this one, you know, if I superimpose, so tau maximum is one point five times of this particular value. thank you all all of you have noted down